Next up on Unity Live at GDC, we're talking to CodeSync about developing They Suspect Nothing for Oculus Go. Hello, and welcome to Unity Live at GDC. Uh, Will and I are joined here by John from Hello. CodeSync. Thank you for joining John. us. Hi, how are you doing? Um, so John, you're here to talk about They Suspect Nothing. Uh, developed for the Oculus Go. Absolutely, yes. So please tell us more about They Suspect Nothing. It's a great idea. I can't wait to play it. So yeah, They Suspect Nothing um, is a collection of comedic mini-games uh, for the Oculus Go, um, in which you play the last human in a world controlled by robots, and you need to prove your mettle by disguising yourself as one of them and completing a series of human detection tests. Um, yeah, it's a great idea. Didn't actually think of it myself. That was, the, uh, <laughs> that was one of the heads of the studio and kind of landed on my desk and I was like, that is a brilliant title, a brilliant premise, let's go. So that was about seven months ago and here we are. So. I was reading about this, um, that actually each of the mini games in They Suspect Nothing, was, was it an internal game jam? Am I right in that, to find all the... Yeah, so in total, I think we had about... Uh, uh, maybe prototype 25 different games. That's oh, wow. amazing. So at the very start of the project, we created a pool of about 50 ideas, and they all had fit these categories of being funny, being simple, um, being kind of great to showcase VR, yeah. um, being replayable as well. Oh, cool. Um, and from those 50, we elected 25, not all at once, but over the course of several weeks, we would jam like three or four at once over the course of three days, sit down at the end and kind of review what we've got and kind of elect one or two from each of these, this process to kind of proceed into full development, which is, uh, yeah, it's a really unusual way of making one video game. What so a fun yeah. process. That yes. sounds absolutely great. It's very tiring from the coders I hear. <laughs> <laughs> but do you think that that's uh, it's really interesting as a process? Like, are you going to take that on for other projects as well? Or? Well, um, if we do more kind of mini game collections, then I would imagine so. Um, but it's it's a pretty exhausting way to kind of go about right. creating loads of content. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, for instance, for our previous game, Augmented Empire, there was just one prototype that showcased all the main kind of gameplay systems, right. exploration, and combat, and things like that. Um, but yeah, it works well for when you're creating a lot of different experiences, I suppose. But um, okay. yeah, it's uh, like I said, it's, it's lengthy, a lot of production strain as well. It's kind yeah. of like the development of They Suspect Nothing was an absolute masterclass in kind of scheduling and timing right. things and everything. Warm. I was going to say, like having three days to like turn around like prototype sounds pretty intense. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Cool. And so uh, you, you guys are working with Oculus Studios. Obviously, the, the Oculus Go thing is pretty new. Yes. What's it like as a platform? I don't really know that much about it. Um, the Oculus Go? Yeah, it's um, uh, personally, I intend to get one. It's, uh, I, I guess it's kind of immediately comparable to maybe the Gear VR, um, except with improved, tra improved rather tracking and optics. Cool. Um, I don't know too much about the actual technical specs, but I do know it's got obviously a standalone piece of equipment, hmm. um, affordable. Um, just a really good entertainment platform all around. And cool. Yeah, kind of look forward to its release on a personal level. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I am as well, because I think, like, I've had a GiveVR in the past, but I just find that, for whatever reason, I don't use it. I don't put my phone in it, and I've just never kind of um, gotten it. But the, the idea of the Oculus uh, Go really feels like something that you just have as a standalone thing. And you'd be mm -hmm. like, I'm going to play this now, and then, you know, kind of go about your business. Um, did you work with Oculus on this? Is that right? Yes, and many projects in the past. Oh, okay. um, they're, oh, yeah. they're basically the, um, uh, the production house behind um, our last kind of four VR titles, I think. So it started with Esper, the first one, which was a launch title for the Gear VR. Oh, um, then right, it's Sequel yeah. the following year, Esper 2. Um, and since I think off the back of Esper 2, we did Augmented Empire, which is when I joined the company. Okay, cool. Um, followed by A Night Sky, and yeah, this will be our fifth title. Okay. Um, and they're, they're, they're really, really good kind of production company to work with. They, um, they're not like overlords kind of controlling <laughs> the purse strings or anything. They're, um, they're more like a helping hand and help with development support and uh, just really understanding when it comes to things like project scope and features and quickly turning around things without making kind of crazy demands on the studio. It's, um, it's a pleasure. Okay, cool. And so with virtual reality not being a stranger to CodeSync, mm -hmm. what learnings have you taken forward to make uh, They Suspect Nothing? Um, so, if I compare it kind of immediately to my experience making Augmented Empire, our last game, I kind of put in the um, lots of groundwork, creating the uh, the world, the characters, and the story for that, and then gave all that to the um, to the art team and the design team to kind of build everything from. But with they, Sus they suspect nothing it was kind of the uh, the reverse. We created all these games, and we had this format and structure set, and I had to kind of glomp story and character ah. and jokes on top of it. Um, so, uh, yeah, in many respects, it's kind of the, the reverse process to actually creating uh, create an augmented empire, kind of a, a 
called it narrative wrangling in the past rather than narrative design. <laughs> you kind of take like what's that. been created and just kind of <laughs> make it work. The narrative shoehorn. Yeah, but it affords a lot of kind of more creative control from like the uh, the artists and the designers to put their input on the characters and environments and um, just kind of create their own assets, if you like, their own world, and I just kind of make it cohesive and just sprinkle on jokes. It was great fun. <laughs> so. Super cool. So the narrative process, when sort of applied to virtual reality, mm -hmm. um, what advice could you give developers out there that are wanting to make a narrative-driven virtual reality experience? Wow. Um, I guess I could just kind of repeat my experience from like creating an augmented empire, just put on all the groundwork, because you really have to kind of focus on lots of details. It's something that right. people really praise augmented empire for, and hopefully um, when they get their hands on they suspect nothing. Just all these environmental details, everything means something because you're that close to to all the action. Um, there's three hubs plus an extra kind of hub hub in uh, They Suspect Nothing. Um, and you can look, obviously, in every direction. You've got characters <laughs> bobbing around and doing things. And I really went out of my way just to put, like, every time you interact with even the wallpaper, something will be said about it. There'll be a joke or something to discover. That's so, nice. Yeah, my main piece of, be, a piece of advice would be just to focus on the details more than anything, on the really fine things, because that's what I think gamers appreciate the most. Just that sense of discovery, you know, especially in VR. It's really interesting. It kind of reminds me a little bit of like the early um, adventure game days as well, when you went from having like, you know, very simple arcadey type games to then mm -hmm. things like, you know, LucasArts games and, and those that kind of area of things where they would hide so much narrative detail and like world building in all yes. kinds of different things. Yeah, I was an absolutely massive fan of Simon the Sorcerer and Monkey yeah. Island and yeah. all the LucasArts stuff. And uh, yeah, I know exactly what you mean there. Cool. Just clicking on the right thing, with the, like interacting it with a particular object just kind of produces some kind of very crazy, funny joke. Yeah. I, I, um, I'm doing a talk and referenced um, Stanley Parable just as mm -hmm. an example, as mm -hmm. a game where you kind of, the sense of discovery is um, really what drives the the gameplay and the comedy behind it. Yeah. Um, you, you don't kind of meet jokes as roadblocks in the way you have to go out of your way to discover them. And I think it's that sense of discovery that, uh, that I think is going to be a, a major USB for this one. Cool. And what, is the game out yet? Is um, no. Um, it will be launched along with the Oculus Go. We're putting out a uh, press release uh, either this week or next with all the details confirming price. And so where should people launch. look for that? Um, probably the uh, Oculus Facebook. Okay. Um, cool. It'll be very easily Googleable as well. Okay. Awesome. Launch date. They suspect nothing. <laughs> and That's so exciting. I'm not sure if you can answer this, but I'm curious. Are you guys going to carry on working with Oculus Studios? Have you got other projects in the pipe? Um, long term, we'll always be uh, kind of supporting VR. Um, okay. Obviously, can't give any details of future projects, but <laughs> um, needless to say, we'll definitely be supporting uh, VR long term now. Awesome. Do where are you at GDC? Yeah, great. Um, I believe we're in the. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if it's the north or the south. The main exhibit hall. <laughs> yeah. um, you North's absolutely can't miss us. I know we're between Facebook and um, Sony America. So, uh, yeah, I think we've got one of the biggest stores. So people can come and try out. Please do. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Awesome. Cool. Well, well, thanks so much thank for coming. So much for us. Thank you so much for joining us. It's great to have you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you.